do you see how good this thing looks? So right now in this video today, what we got going on is the entire process of how we are getting this truck from just being black primer at the end of my last video to ending up with a result that is this. Dude, let's get started. I cannot wait to show you how I got here. And this truck looks so good, dude. For everybody who was saying it looked better before, I don't know what to tell you now. And now, you're watching the... Hey, so what is up and welcome and thank you so much for joining me yet again on another video. So now that we are getting into the patina paint job, what we want to do first, see, we want to get into this brown. A patina paint job for me is all about layers, which order you're doing which layer, and then different procedures and whatnot. So we are always building off the layer that was there before. At the end of the last video, I went ahead and I put this black primer all over the car. And the reason for this black primer was if I'm sanding down anything and I hit black, I know I need to stop, but we can come back with a black brush if we needed to, if I burned through to the actual primer below, the actual gray primer, which we did when I sanded down this black primer, but that is all good. So the first thing that I wanna do, speaking of layers, is we have this brown right here. This is the closest match that I could find to the brown primer that would have been on this truck originally because a lot of these old school Fords, they used a brown primer back in the day. So when the paint got worn down, that's why you saw brown. It wasn't necessarily rust, even though it was rust in some cases. So let's go ahead and get that nice, consistent brown laid down. Then we will start building on top of it, bringing in different colors, different layers, and that's just the first step. So let's get this brown mixed up and then lay down. So at this point, we have our brown base down. Now, one thing that I wanted to point out with is usually you would do at least two layers when you're doing base coat. But what I wanted to do, I just did one layer over the entire thing and I don't need to waste product because the product is expensive, right? So I did one coat over the entire thing and then the areas that I know are for sure going to be exposed, like the roof, the hood, and some of the tops of the body lines, those all got two coats. But everywhere that's below, like in this door area over here, naturally sun wouldn't wear and tear on that that much. So that only got one layer, meaning if I do sand and scuff it through and you see a little bit of that brown, that's okay. But again, I don't need to waste product over there. So the next thing that I wanna do with this patina paint process is I want to start building on my base foundation. So this brown is probably as light as I'm going to do. Now I'm going to go as dark as I'm going to do by kind of misting and messing around with some blacks. I wanna highlight some body lines, just make some cool, fun design, something that the sun would do or what I think the sun would do or I don't know, really we're just winging it, messing around, building up layers to eventually get the bigger picture of how we want it to look. So with this black that I'm going to be doing, I could use an airbrush, but I want to get a little bit more of an area done. So I'm actually going to dial down my DeVilbis DV1 in a way that's going to get me the desired effect that I want. So let's get that black base coat mixed up and start messing around and see, see what we can come up with.
so as I am making my way around the car before that first layer of brown that was a foundation color now this I'm looking at this as my new foundation because we're going to keep building on top of this there are definitely some areas that I really like there are some that I don't like so much where it became a little bit too streaked but that's okay we can mess with it we can always move back if we want to so now I'm going to do a combination of some brushwork, some sponge work, different blacks and browns to make it look a little bit more naturally weathered as opposed to so soft. I talked about in my last video, I didn't like how some of the brush stuff just makes it look really soft and that's how it looks now. So we need to just keep building and building. And also when I was doing all of this highlighting work or kind of this mist work, I'd say I was mixing I started with my brown, then we did the black, then we kind of went somewhere in between. I introduced orange into it, I introduced red. The red into the light brown made more of a darker brown with a little bit of black in there. Just messing around, mixing different colors, having a good time. Certain things I wanted to highlight, like I know this is gonna be F-O-R-D right here. So I wanted that to be extra dark and also I'm going to be doing some airbrush work as well. This is just part of the process and anything that I'm messing around with, we can mess around in this area just to kind of give us some test templates and whatnot. So let's go ahead and keep it moving, man. This so far is looking good. Alright, so at this point I used my sponge and that was right in here. See, the main thing that the sponge is going to do is just going to give us some texture. It doesn't so much matter what the color is because after the fact I came back with this speckly black nasty coat. So now it is looking like a really good, nice and consistent brown rust dirty look. So the next thing that I got to do with this truck, well what I want to do, I don't have to do anything with this. I like the way that these trucks from the 60s looks when they're like one color below and then the roof is white but my whole roof up top is not going to be white so I need to figure out where exactly I want to do white so that way I can get kind of a I don't know if you'd call this two-tone but it's just another layer that we're adding to my project to make it look the exact way that I want it to look so let's go ahead I got my white right here this is actually Honda championship white you know why because that's what I had laying around and that's what it's all about man using what you have laying around repurposing stuff and having it look good without spending a lot of money So now we are actually getting somewhere. We have the white going on. That's part of the paint job. The brown below was kind of like a base layer, but the white was the first remnants of how this truck would have looked if it were to be painted from the factory this way. So we got the white over here, and I didn't mask up above 
because by the time you sand it out a little bit, it looks really good. So one of the paint layers that I did was large speckles. I just adjusted my gun to the point that it would just be spitting out speckles of paint. And I went a little bit heavier with the speckles on the area that the transition is going to be. So where the white is right here and it transitions into the brown, it fades a little bit with somewhat of a gradient. So let me show you how that looks. So this, we still have a lot more attention to give it. I'm also going to come back with the black on my airbrush and highlight it a little bit more. But as you can see, that's looking natural and that's looking pretty good. So I decided that I like that enough that I'm not gonna do any kind of tape. I'm just going to run out my mint green color. That's the color that I decided to go with, which would have been an OEM color for this truck for this year. I think it looks pretty good, but I do need to tape off this white because that shouldn't be any type of faded or worn out paint. That would have been a nice clean line from the factory. After the fact, I'll come and I'll maybe sand it down a little bit just to make it look all worn out. So we got the paint right here. Nice grandpa mint green, perfect color for this truck. So let's get that mixed up. Well, actually I got to tape off that white, then we'll get this mixed up and then go for it. So here we are on the next day, that mint green laid out pretty nicely, as good as I would expect it to lay out. Now the problem is, is this mint green looks, it looks too good, which is weird to say on a paint job that a paint could look too good, but as we're going for something that looks a lot older, everything up here, I like the direction that all this is, but down there, it is too new. So what I wanna do is I want to take my 600 grit sandpaper, I'm just gonna throw a time lapse on so that way you can see exactly what I'm hitting, how I'm doing it, how long I am doing it, and what I am going for. See, in some of these areas, when I was actually painting them with the browns and the blacks and those undertones, I purposely gave myself a lot more texture over here, a lot of speckled texture, because those speckles are going to be the first thing that comes through, and that gives it a nice look that this truck had been just getting rubbed on and getting weathered. I don't really like patina paint jobs when you see just two tones, like the top tone and the undertone, or just green and then clean brown below. We wanna start sanding it down, start to see some blacks, browns, and light browns, dark browns, as if it was old primer or rust or whatever it is. We just want this paint job to look like it is 50 years old, when in fact it is a brand new paint job. So let me grab that 600 and then we'll start sanding.
So now that I got my sanding on, what I want to do is to just get into a little bit of, well, I say little bit, but I'm really gonna take a few hours and highlight a few things. I have black right here, I have brown right here, and this is all for my airbrush. I'm just going to get into a little bit of airbrush work just to make it look a little bit more weathered and old. So really what I'm trying to do is anywhere that water or rust or anything would have run down, like a really good area is like obviously the door handles, like water would have collected and ran down this. And I don't know how far I'm going to have it run out and also, the little door lock anywhere that the mirrors are going, little bolts, whatever, whatever. Just go ahead, mess around, have fun with it. And you don't have to do this if you don't necessarily want to. You can go ahead and clear coat it now. Now, as far as the clear coat goes, I'm doing a gloss clear coat. I will get into that more when I'm actually doing the clear coat itself. Now, I've done flat clear coat before, but I don't like that process as much. Being a painter, how flat clear coat turns out. I don't think it turns out as good. It looks pretty good in pictures and whatnot, but I just like to do a gloss clear. So we got the Pablo Picasso on. Well, I don't know that he ever did any type of airbrush work, but what I did is I went ahead and I did a little bit of airbrush work the way that I wanted to make it look or try to look as real. Come on, bro. The way that I tried to make it look as realistic as possible is I went with a brown that was further, a little bit wider, and then a darker brown or black in the middle to just make it look like water or rust or whatever had been running here for a long time and then it kind of fades to nothing on the outside. I'm happy with it. I think that it looks really good. I know some people don't like patina paint jobs, but I'm hoping that when I take this thing to meets or just out in the streets and whatnot, I'm hoping that I fool some people into thinking that this is an authentic job. I think that going a little bit over the top with some of the drips is a little bit more than necessary and makes it look a little bit less authentic, but I think it looks a little cooler that way just by having it kind of run off almost looks like almost looks like a movie car type vibe and I'm really happy with how the white turned out I think that looks perfect everything looks really good so now that I am happy with the car it is time to get into that clear coat so when it comes to patina paint jobs the preferred finish is usually like a flat or satin finish but when it comes to painting I've done flat clears before and I don't like how flat clears turn out and the reason why I don't like it is because how it sprays right out the gun is going to be how it is going to look forever for example 
if you kind of start over here and then you work around the car and then finish right over here it's going to be a little bit fuzzy a little bit inconsistent over here now if you had a regular clear coat that would be no problem because you can come back and wet sand and buff which I will probably be doing wet sanding and buffing the entire thing by the time this thing is done so that way it looks really nice and clean so I'm just going to get the clear coat mixed up laid down I want to get this thing pulled out take a look at it and take it all in man it's been a lot of work but it's been a fun process also slam box tees on the sites hit the link down below get you a shirt by the time this video is over if you like how it turned out let's go ahead and spray that clear coat So here we go. This is it. I did that last coat of clear. I ended up doing two coats on the entire truck. The hood, just because it was a little bit fuzzy in a couple areas, I went ahead and I slapped a third coat on. And everything looks as good as I could have ever hoped, as good as I could have ever imagined. A couple of these dust spots can be sanded out. Now that it is gloss clear, if I wanted to wet sand and buff the entire thing, I could do just that. But honestly, dude, I think I think it looks really good just as is. I might want to give a few spots some more attention. So naturally, I would want to bring the truck out and take a look at it. Whenever I'm doing something like this, it's always really nice to step back and look at the bigger picture. It's kind of hard to see in a smaller shop like this, but my service bed is actually behind it. It's in the way, so we are not going to be able to pull it out now. As far as this entire process goes of this build, if you are not familiar with this truck and exactly what it is, I'd encourage you to go back to the beginning of the playlist and figure out how I got it to this point. If you want to see the truck completed in its entirety, that'll be in the next video or few videos because we need to get into making the service bed match this. The key is to make it seem like this truck is original with the service bed on it. It needs to be weathered and patina the exact same. So that's what I'm going to start getting into. So that is coming up and I am definitely looking forward to that. So if you are new around here, I would encourage you to subscribe. I want to hear your thoughts. I want to hear what you think. So leave that in the comment section down below and I will see you on the next one. I'm just going to chill in the shop and look at it. I'm out.